Welcome back to Behind a Catfish, where we dive into the spookiest and most bizarre stories of online deception. As we embrace the Halloween season, we're exploring tales that are scarier than any haunted house. In today's video, I'm sharing three stories where trust was broken and reality turned into a nightmare, all during the creepiest time of year. From chilling encounters and corn mazes to eerie online personalities, these stories will make you question everything. So buckle up for some Halloween horrors in the world of catfishing. Dinner party nightmare, a Halloween catfish horror. It was Halloween night and I don't know why I agreed to this. Meeting Michael had seemed like such a good idea at first. We had been talking for months. Deep personal conversations that made me feel like I truly knew him. He always knew how to make me laugh, how to say exactly what I wanted to hear. But as I stood outside his house, this creepy house, I couldn't shake the gnawing feeling that something was wrong. We were supposed to meet at a coffee shop somewhere public and safe, but Michael had suggested that a last minute change. An invitation to a Halloween dinner party at a friend's place. Much more intimate, he'd said. You'll love it, and I can introduce you to my closest friends. It felt risky, but he reassured me that there would be other people and I didn't want to seem paranoid. So against my better judgment, I said yes. Still, I shared my location with a friend, just in case. The house was on the outskirts of town, isolated, the kind of place you see in horror movies. Old, with peeling paint and a sagging porch, there were a few half-hearted Halloween decorations, but the eerie silence made them feel sinister. I knocked on the door, and it opened almost immediately. A tall man stood there smiling, but his face was hidden behind a plain white mask with hollow black eyes. Emma, you made it, he said warmly, his voice deeper than I expected. I forced a laugh. As I stepped inside, the air felt wrong, too still, too quiet. The house was dimly lit with no sound of chatter or music. The smell hit me next, metallic, sharp, and strange. It turned my stomach, but I couldn't quite figure out why. Michael motioned down a long hallway, shadows pooling at the edges. The others are just getting things ready. Why don't you go into the dining room? I'll grab us some drinks. Then I hesitated. Where were these friends he had mentioned? The house felt empty. But I didn't want to overreact, so I nodded and walked into the room he pointed to. The dining room was eerie. The table was set for two with candles flickering in the middle, casting long, unsettling shadows across the walls. My heart pounded in my chest, a sickening realization washing over me. I wasn't at some casual party. I was alone, trapped in a stranger's house. Panic surged through me as I fumbled for my phone, but there was no signal. Of course there wasn't. Suddenly, the door creaked open behind me. Do you like the display? Michael's voice sent a wave of dread crashing over me. My blood ran cold. I didn't think I just ran. I bolted down the hallway, my breath coming in ragged gasp, heart pounding in my ears. I tried door after door, but they were all locked, leading nowhere. The house seemed to twist around me, amazed with no way out. Behind me, I heard his footsteps, slow, deliberate. He was enjoying this. I finally found a door that led outside and stumbled into the backyard, and then Michael's voice, soft teasing, carried by the wind. Happy Halloween, Emma, I'll find you. But somehow I found my way back to my car, and I threw myself inside. With trembling fingers I jammed the key into the ignition and turned it. The engine roared to life, a sound that filled me with a desperate kind of relief. I didn't waste another second. I floored the gas pedal, the tires screeching as I tore away from the house, gravel spitting from the tires. Still I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't safe. My hands gripped the steering wheel tightly, knuckles white. My heart was pounding, adrenaline coursing through my veins and that terrifying realization was still settling and gnawing at me. Lost in the maze, the Halloween catfish encounter. I agreed to meet Jack on Halloween. Drawn in by his charm and wit during our weeks of chatting online, we decided on a haunted corn maze outside of town. He promised a fun surprise to fit the spooky night. Feeling adventurous, I went along with it and told my friend where I'd be. When I arrived, the maze was nearly deserted. The only light flickered above the ticket booth, a chasting long shadows in the eerie quiet. I searched for Jack, but he was nowhere to be seen. Instead, a man stood near the entrance, partially hidden in the darkness. Jack, I called out, hope flickering. He stepped forward and my heart sank. He was older, rougher, nothing like the charming guy I had been chatting with. I lied to you, he said, his voice chilling. 
In that instant, I realized I had been catfished. The man I thought I knew was a figment of my imagination, and now I was alone with a stranger in a haunted maze. Fear washed over me. I turned to run, but he blocked my path, his expression predatory. I'd been waiting a long time for this, he taunted. Adrenaline surges as I dashed into the maze, the corn closing in around me. I ran blindly through the twisting path, my heart racing, desperately seeking an exit. Behind me, I could hear him, his footsteps slow and deliberate, as if he relished the chase. Finally, I burst into the parking lot and raced to my car, fumbling with my keys. I sped away, glancing back once. He stood at the edge of the maze, watching, grinning. I had escaped, but the nightmare of that night would haunt me forever. I had been lured by a lie, and some horrors never truly end. Festival of Lies, my Halloween catfish revelation. I'd been chatting with Alice for weeks on the Bumble app. She was everything I thought I wanted in a woman. Funny, charming, and easy to talk to. Our shared love for Halloween made it feel like fate when she suggested we meet on the holiday at the local Halloween festival, a lively outdoor event filled with food trucks and awesome haunted attractions. Excited, I donned a dashing vampire gentleman costume hoping to impress her. When I arrived, the atmosphere was electric. Pumpkin decorations lit up the pathways and laughter filled the air. I looked around eagerly, but Alice was nowhere to be found. After waiting for about 15 minutes, I texted her. Hey, I'm here. Where are you? Moments later, my phone buzzed. Sorry, I'm stuck in traffic. I'll be there soon. I then felt a wave of relief and decided to explore while I waited. I wandered past food stalls, tried some pumpkin flavored treats, and took pictures by creepy scarecrow displays. After 30 minutes, I received another message from Alice. Can you meet me at the haunted hayride? I really want to see you. Excited, I made my way over. The hayride area was packed and I scanned the crowd for Alice. I received a text. Look for the girl in with the long blue flannel skirt. I spotted a woman in a long blue flannel skirt, nervously looking around. This wasn't the short, dark-haired woman from the pictures, but someone with a lot of male characteristics completely different. Are you Alice? I asked, confused. Yeah, I'm so glad you made it, she said, stepping closer. Confusion and panic washed over me. I think I should go, I said, backing away. She grabbed my outfit, her grip tightening. Wait, I came all this way to meet you. I pulled free and pushed back. She or he's bulky body as adrenaline was surging through me. Don't touch me. I didn't come to see you, pointing my index finger towards this person. Then I sprinted toward the parking lot, glancing back to see her following. I jumped in my car and locked the door just in time. As I sped away, I looked back. The woman stood at the edge of the festival watching me as she took off her wig, revealing more of his real self. I had escaped, but I couldn't shake the feeling that this had happened. I always took those bumble catfish stories as a joke until I ended up being the actual victim. I trusted someone who wasn't real, and Halloween night had turned terrifying in an instant. Halloween reminds us that the scariest monsters don't always wear masks. These stories highlight how easily someone's trust can be manipulated online, especially during a time when everything is cloaked in mystery and fun. It's unsettling to think that behind those screens there could be something much darker lurking. Personally, I find these stories terrifying because they show how the simplest interactions can spiral into something sinister. Have you ever been catfished, especially during a spooky time like Halloween? Share your experiences in the comments and maybe you can help someone avoid falling into the same trap. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you're always updated on the latest stories of deception. Stay spooky and stay safe online.